In this video, I want to give you a little overview about TestGrid, which is the main interface you'll be using to check how tests are going throughout the release cycle. So if you actually uh, head over to Kubernetes SIG release under the role handbooks for CI Signal, there's a lot of details in here which really start off with links to uh, several different SIG release dashboards that you will be watching throughout the release cycle. So you can click here to get to some of these directly. Um, I also have open over here the kates-testgrid uh, .appspot.com URL here, which is the interface into all of the related test grids, but we're hanging over here in SIG release. So if you click in here, this will also take you to um, sort of the parent view for test grid for SIG release. So there's a lot of different uh, types of dashboards. Um, the most important ones that you will be following are master blocking and master informing. And then once uh, the release is actually cut, uh, you'll also be following the releases blocking and informing dashboards as well uh, once these dashboards are set up for uh, one of the later release candidates. So um, if we click in or actually just to uh, talk a little bit about blocking versus informing, um, as mentioned in the handbook, blocking our dashboard, our test Comp our dashboards comprise of test suites that should always be passing and for which a release cut um, is at risk of um, not being cut because that if, if a test on this dashboard is failing, whereas master informing is not as strong of a signal. Uh, these might be tests that um, are more are flakier or just otherwise don't meet the bar for running often enough or with high enough reliability to actually provide a signal to block a release. And that terminology is used uh, for the uh, specific release cut dashboards as well. So in general, you'll always be uh, taking a look at master blocking and master informing with a special emphasis on master blocking. So if I click in here, um, all uh, test grid um, dashboards kind of look the same. Uh, you can get to any of the other dashboards in this sort of SIG release general category up here. Um, you can uh, check the summary or click uh, for details of each of the individual uh, suites um, up here, which is also the same as clicking on each of these individual um, links here, uh, which I'll do in a second. But before I do that, I'll just also highlight that, you know, we've got this iconography over here uh, for uh, tests that are failing, tests that are passing, or tests that are considered flaky. Um, so flaky, there's a threshold of um, failed uh, tests. Um, and failing, there's another, a separate threshold of percentage of failed tests in the past couple of runs. So at some point, if flaky tests continue to flake, they will actually transition to this failed state. So if we click in to um, something that's flaky, we'll kind of see what the actual test grid uh, look view looks like. So we'll have all the sort of titles of each of the individual tests in this test suite. Um, if you highlight over uh, here you'll see uh, that each of these rows are corresponding to that particular part of the test suite. Then we also have going up here um, dates, uh, time stamps for a run, and then also the commits that they were uh, representing. So uh, when they're all green, they're all green. That means they're passing. These Fs here are indicating that there was some sort of failure. So if we scroll over here, it looks like this one has been kind of clean on the top here for a while and had kind of a bad day uh, at 8.30 PDT on 6.2. Uh, let me slide back to um, switch to SIG release master informing, uh, which you'll see has uh, a bunch of other test suites in here, right? And as mentioned, informing um, are generally less reliable, so this might be uh, less green uh, than master blocking is at it, uh, on average. Um, but if we take a look at, for example, this uh, test suite here, um, then we'll see uh, some more variation in terms of um, cases where 
some parts of the test suite failed, but other parts passed. So it didn't. It wasn't that the whole thing crashed and then didn't run the rest of the test. Some parts of the of the test suite ran and some of them failed. Um, in general, um, you'll start to gather as you're reading these that there's kind of overall or test like dot test, which are part of the um, and end test framework that uh, f are always fail in tandem with uh, the actual source uh, test that caused their failure that caused that was actually the root cause of their failure. So they'll usually be grouped uh, in some sense with uh, something that's overall or dot test um, and then you'll need to find the uh, case or cases um, that were actually the root cause of the failure. When you click into any of these grid pieces on the grid, but it's more interesting to click a failure, um, then it will take you to this view, which uh, will allow you to see the logs for that test, and it will also surface the failure messages for any failed um, test in the test suite. So here we can drop this down, drop this down, and we can see that there is a timeout while waiting for some pods to be ready. Um, if we actually go back and take a look at this failure a couple uh, times before, we'll see that this was the same error uh, as well. So this is the type of information you can use to kind of track a cause of a test failure. Uh, one other thing I want to highlight uh, besides the fact that you can kind of just click around here and uh, change how this uh, all looks. There is a see these results on Prowl link, um, which will take you to kind of a different view of um, more compact in terms of the entire test run and its success or failure as opposed to um, pulling out e each test um, itself. But this is a, a link that is sometimes shared a lot in Slack uh, often, so I wanted to highlight that. If you click in here, you'll see that you actually come to that same view uh, that we got to from the uh, test grid, um, the grid view um, with its failure surfaced. So that's a quick overview of uh, what these dashboards look like and how to interact with them, and I hope that helped you out.